audio's good? Your audio's great. So I have with me our Goblins aficionado. Oh gosh. Dan Ford. <laughs> I don't know if it's that official. <laughs> who's in the top eight with us. Top four now. Top four <laughs> with us. Um, and we're just going to talk about his deck choice, why he made it, um, what's going on with this deck. So first, first and foremost, why did you choose to bring Goblins to this event? Um, I've played Goblins since 2013, 2012. Okay. So a long time. So Dedication. Uh, yeah, dedication to the deck, which Legacy is all about. Mm -hmm. And then um, I have been toying with other decks, but I just wouldn't feel right if I did well with the other decks, you know? It, yep. it would have been like betrayal to my, to my I, green brother. I, 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 I believe that. I understand <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> so. Okay, perfect. So you are you're played Goblins for a long time. I'm sure you've then talked with Mike Hadley a lot about Goblins. Yeah, yeah. He's YouTube. also a really good player. Playing that, and um, let's go ahead and just talk about the matchups in the top eight. So, sure. obviously, you don't know deck lists, so let me not put these right. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to read them. Like I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but you, you know, a lot of the decks that you're playing are yeah. going to be blue decks. How do you feel about the matchup against just generally blue decks, delvers, uh, yeah, check it, piles, things of that nature? It depends. Um, if they're more removal heavy, and then like, like check pile can get rid of um, cards out of your hand, so if they get rid of your card advantage cards, like their one for ones actually become relevant. Mm -hmm. If not, like let's say against like miracles, they're they're just going to be able to handle what's on the board. So long as you don't overextend and they don't get a two for one, you're going to be grinding out like three cards over them. Gotcha. So you're going to end the you're going to end the game with like four or five cards in the hand, and they're going to end the game with nothing. Typically. So out of the three players that are left, other than you, we've got uh, miracles, of Grixis, Delver, and Bug. What do you what do you uh, what do you want to play? Uh, I want to play Miracles, but um, I just heard that he's got a spicy card for me. <laughs> oh, and you um, don't want that. Yeah, and I, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that one. Understood. Understood. Well, I'm I'm excited to watch your matchup. And let's just actually really quick go through your deck list. So yeah, you the have, deck list is interesting. You have a lot of one-ups. Obviously, you have oh, uh, yeah. a tutor, so yes. <laughs> no reason not to run them. You've got uh, Krenko Mario Boss, which we saw on camera earlier. Just, uh, it was it was amazing. Yeah. So many yeah. one ones that were two twos. Yes, so. exactly. Even better with the chieftain. Yeah. Uh, so is he just like your late game sort of win condition? Yeah. So there's a few um, quote unquote bombs in it, which is um, in the form of Krenko, Siege Gang, and Kiki Jiki. Uh, those are your top end curve. If they land and they stick, they're really really hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, two one two one. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's it's essentially depending on what's happening in the early game. If you can get if you grind it out to those bombs, you're just in a really really good spot. So um, an interesting part about this list, I, I just I just started this list. This is the um, similar to the list that um, that there are two goblins top eights over in the Brazilian tournament. Oh okay. Yeah. So it's um, it's the instigator list, for, which basically means that the key of it is that it runs War and Instigator as opposed to the other lot lists don't. War and Instigator is basically super lackey. Yep. Where it's the double strike lackey. Oh, you're and on a full four. Yeah, oh, I did guy, not see that. That guy is fire. Like when it gets rolling, just because it's it's easy to deal with. You know, they're gonna try and bolt your lackey, push your lackey, whatever. But if you have another one to follow it up, like they, it comes to this point where they can't deal with it, and it attacks past um, the X twos, which is huge. So, because that's that's where lackey falls. And yep. the Chrome Ox being able to push that out, also just Chrome Ox being able to be days protection against these blue decks, as you were mentioning earlier. And, and uh, I saw great. you do that earlier, and I was a little confused, and then I was like, and then uh, Kevin McCoy actually pointed out that you were playing around the days, and I was like, oh, yes, that's very wise. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Good yeah, I cannot run in, because, like, the entire thing is, and which stinks that now, now like, I have four Tar Fires, right? Tar mm -hmm. you, it's basically you have to run it now. Before, you didn't have to run Tar Fire, be and your entire deck was pretty much uncounterable, because even your removal, you didn't worry about. The only thing they could counter was Aether Vial, and after that, it was just really, really tough to counter anything in the deck because you had your caverns, your Aether Vials, and your lackeys, and that's how you could play everything throughout the entire game. Now you have Tar Fires, so counter spells are a little bit more alive, so you have to be very days conscious in the early game, otherwise you're just going to get blown out because you sense. need your resources more than they do. Yeah, of course. Especially especially your um, your ringleaders, right? Right, that's, which is, that like, is the yeah, card. That is definitely the best card um, in the deck, some might say. She, uh, it all works well together, right? But yeah. ringleader is like the point. And so, other than those late game wingers, you have a couple other one ups. Uh, you have a tuck tuck scrapper. I feel like that's pretty standard in goblin list at this point, right? Yeah, you need the artifact just because they roll you over so hard. Like jitte, yeah, jitte is yeah, disgusting. <laughs> and then. Um, Let's see, just a couple more cards. You got the Goblin Settler blows up the lands. Um, yeah, that worked once so far. I'm still evaluating it, and then Sparksmith as well. That that one of is one that I'm still evaluating. All that, yeah. Which um, tends to 
it, it'll ruin it'll ruin you faster than it helps you um, in bolt matchups. But against green matchups, great. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I mean, remove anything on their battlefield and yeah. you just take a little damage. Sounds good. Exactly. So I do believe we're actually about to start your match. So thank All you right. so much for coming yeah. and talking with us. Thank you. And uh, I'm gonna shake your hand even though I don't think they can see it. <laughs> good luck on in the top eight. Thank top you. Four. All right. So we're about to get started with our top four. Nick Gill coming back to join us. And here he is. Love it. Hey, what's up, Internet? So, uh, let's see which side of the board we're going to have our Goblins player on. Looks and like he will be on the left side. With the Brainstorm. So, on the left side, we'll have Dan Ford. Goblin. On Master. Goblins. <laughs> and he is going to be going up against... Who do we have? Frankie we have Rodriguez. On Grixis Delver. Interesting. I feel like out of all of the matchups, this is the hardest for goblins. Oh, I completely agree. Um, Lightning Bolt, a one mana removal spell, is going to be very important. And uh, I also think that Pyromancer is going to be very important. Yep. Uh, being able to keep up with goblins on the ground is critical. Uh, you don't want to let the goblins player kind of get get too wide past you because they they are very good at leveraging that advantage. And then our other table, which uh, we'll see if we can get them on camera if we have time, will be Mike Griffin, uh, who we saw last round on Miracles against Brad Young playing a Sultai Delver list. Interesting. Uh, Ooh, day, with the day, full days of four old. Hand to Torak. Bug Delver. B Bug Delver. Uh, which some might call Soltai. Soltai. Yes. Um, the newer name. And then, uh, yeah, if we if we have time, we will put that match on. But neither of those players are on goblins, so we're going to watch this. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta get your goblin game going. So, uh,. We just had an extensive interview with the Goblins player, so you are very familiar with their list. Uh, just taking a look at Mr. Rodriguez's list, we've got the typical four of Deathrite Shaman, four of Delver Secret, only two young Pyromancer. That's going to be uh, it's going to be important in this matchup. Two true name nemesis. You're, you're very you're very set on this young Pyromancer being. I, I mean, I feel like it's important, but I think you have you're putting a lot of weight on this card. Why so? Um, so it, it allows the uh, Grixis Delver player to play both an aggressive game and a defensive game. They don't have to spend their mana deploying their threats once they've got the power manager in play. They can spend their entire time pondering and brainstorming to find removal spells and just okay. continue to attack the opponent's board while still um, cre creating a board presence themselves. That makes sense. That makes sense. Whereas, um, you know, like a, a Delver of Secrets or a Deathrite Shaman aren't going to be able to uh, clock the opponent fast enough that they can play that, that sort of, you know, like lightning bolt near guy game. They're, they're going to have to add more threats to the board. Uh, and, and yeah, I think if the Grixis Delver player gets to the point where they're blocking a lot, they're probably going to fall behind. They, they, they really want to get ahead and stay ahead, as most Delver players do. Um, however, the uh, two young Paramancers that would be there are two True Nade Nemesis, which is going to be a Ooh. fantastic card in this matchup. That's a spicy one. Uh, it's just very good. I, I do believe that there isn't really a way for the Goblins player to deal with that. So they just kind of have to kill the opponent. Um, so... Uh, the customary two of Gurmag Angler. We've got uh, the standard four of Brainstorm, Lightning Bolt, Ponder. Uh, we're on three Cataxian Probe, one Spell Pierce, one Daze. Uh, I'm sorry, four Daze, one Dismember, four Force of Will, uh, and then three Stifle. Stifle's an interesting card because in this matchup, uh, stifling enter the battlefield triggers is certainly a viable strategy. Um, a lot of the goblins uh, cards have enter the battlefield effects that are 
incredibly powerful, um, as well as Goblin Lackey uh, combat damage triggers. So Stifle uh, could be very powerful. It just has to line up at the right time. Exactly. I mean, exactly. That's, that's it, it, thing, it's right? certainly a situational card, but um, it it certainly has a decent number of targets. Mm -hmm. And it looks like we're off to the and races. And Frankie Drix is going to be on the play. Also very important. Yep. Getting that Death Ray Shaman out yep. immediately. That's going to blank any lackeys that he has. Possibly one of the best uh, individual magic cards in Legacy right now, Death Ray Shaman. It, it, I think it's arguable that it is the, the best card. I, 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 would, I would agree, to be to be honest. Uh, it just it does so much yeah, for so little. It's a Planeswalker for one mana. Who doesn't want that? Who doesn't want that? And it breaks the color pie. <laughs> also wide very open. important. Wide open. <clears throat> People don't always realize that breaking the color pie is actually one of the most broken things you do in the entire game. I, I, I have uh, heard that the two things that hurt Magic R&D the most is when they break the color pie and when they print mana reduction. Yep, alternate costs. And, uh, Delve. And that seems to, be, seems to be true. And they keep doing it, so. Yep. Looking at you, Magic R&D. <laughs> All right, so turn one, Death Rite <coughs> Shaman, a fantastic opening. Looks like uh, his hand is a young pyromancer, Delver of Secrets, and a true name nemesis. No Not second land, Ooh. Uh, but we've got a brainstorm. So he's got a very threat, dense hand. Not very much interaction. Um, so and we're gonna see the lackey go to the chrome box, which makes sense after seeing you know yep. a Death Rite. Uh, yep. And Not, that was uh, actually just to play around the days. Just to get this vial in. Mm -hmm. Vial being very important, I feel like, in this matchup. It gives you oh, absolutely. Sort of, sort yeah, of mana the, uh, in some ways, and also just uncounterable threats. Right, and, and, and it makes sense to play around days here because after the vial gets into play, the counter spells get very, very bad for yep. the, uh, the Delver player. Now, I'm curious. Uh, this is very old school, but uh, you're really supposed to always tap your vial to see if they stifle it. So I'm curious to see if our Goblins player will tap his vial every turn just to see if the stifle comes out. E even on zero? Well, okay. Not so not no. not always then. I mean, you could do it. You I could. Would, I would it doesn't cost it anything. It. It's true. It doesn't cost you anything. It also just lets them know that it will get tapped every turn and they have every to think. Every single every time, turn. Which I like. I, I, I hope know. It that's, I mean, I, I'm i not a man to leave value on the table and that is value. Mm, true. All right. So, so we're, we're looking at a brainstorm resolving here. Looks like he did find a wasteland, but perhaps no fetch. It looks no, like it back. looks like there is True a name fetch. Ponder is going back on yep. top. Uh, and you said he does have the fetch. Eating his land. Doing, doing death right things. Delver. Delver. Strong, so strong follow-up play. And, and then looks like we're going to be playing a waste It is a waste. It was not a fetch. So we or he wants may the top. be a little bit uh, oh, no, we are locked. locked. Yep. Which is unfortunate. But he does, the least. he does know the top card of the Ponder, so that Delver is flipping. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. No and, and, and the Ponder will allow him to reset the last card. Mm -hmm. off the he can just shuffle if he really wants to. Yep. And he needs to find a fetch, because not only does he need the fetch for his own land, but he needs it for the Delver, or for the, um, for the Death Edge Shaman. Yeah, yep. yeah, this is definitely a matchup where Death Edge Shaman is going to be making mana a lot. Yep. Uh, he definitely is going to have to keep up with the Goblins player, mana for mana, which is not an easy task when the opponent has an Aether Vial in play. And his hand right now is so anemic. He has a Daze and a Force of Will. I think a Goblin, uh, uh, see the Young Paramancer, and then I couldn't tell what the last blue card was. I believe was, it is True Name Nemesis. Okay. No, no, he put that on top of Oh, that. did he? Okay. It's, it's something else. Uh, Ooh, we're, we're seeing a pyrokinesis exiling. Oh wow, this is a this is a force of willable target, and I think he's gonna take it just because it is. And you know, it's blo it's wiping his board, so it's been, it seems like a absolutely thing to no. Play. Yeah, I, I would be shocked if he allowed this to center. allowed this to go through. I, I believe. The, this oh, it's a Delver. A oh, okay, Delver. yes. So I, I I would definitely be pitching the days here, yep. mm -hmm. um, just because the as we stated earlier, the Aether Vial will allow the Goblins player to play around the. Uh, the counter spells very easily for the rest of the game. Yep, and as expected, force pitching days, and that's putting some down to I believe 19 or 18. My apologies for not keeping up with that life total. I'm just very enthralled by our captain's play. It's, it's very exciting so far. And matron. so, what a matron comes out after that using just all three mana, and he did pitch the days. So the matron's gonna resolve. I like this play. He's, he's not worried about the days anymore since he's just not get pitched. Uh, unex not expecting a second one in the open in the hand, so it's pretty free. Yeah. Um, and I wonder if he's going to do a search here. I'm pretty curious. I don't really know what the, the goblin's line is. And it's, oh, ringleader. Oh, that makes 
That makes perfect sense. Yep. Um, <coughs> reading through our ringleader here, and he has one card left in hand, I believe. And I'm kind of hoping that's just a land. That would be that would be ideal. Now we just need to get the ringleader chain going, right? Ringleader to ringleader, and some other silly goblins, and oof, we got really ourselves a time. Mm -hmm. Now this Delver will get flying, uh, and it's 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 not a, the fastest clock, but with the death rate showing paired, it's it's not a slow clock. No, yeah, the the, definitely the, die. the goblins player is definitely got to got to get moving here, but uh, I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue, especially if he has the fourth land. Well. His land just got wastelanded, so he's not casting. Interesting, that interesting. So uh, comes in for three. Frankie is not looking to play the uh, to play any more threats. He is looking to deny resources. I, I mean, that's my favorite kind of plan, right? Oh yeah, no. It's, I, it's if, it, if it's available be. to you, I completely agree. And you're gonna see the ponder. I'm expecting a shuffle here, unless he finds some really just good stuff, but he has the true name, he's just Sur really Surprised at the sequencing, uh, I would expect the Ponder to be cast before the Wasteland gets, uh... Wasteland was at the end of his last turn, or the last turn, actually. Oh, it was during Dan Ford's turn, after he revealed that he was getting a ringleader, he Wastelanded him then. Interesting. Um, now, he definitely could have waited, there was no reason to do it then, okay. um, but... I, uh... <laughs> I, I, I play primarily Storm uh, in Legacy, so it's n nice to see some uh, fair versus fair magic. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of interesting uh, spots. Oh yeah, you, you only see the unfair side. Ah, sounds like well, an awful I place mean, to be. They, my, my opponents play fair magic against me, and it just mm. looks it looks so boring, let me tell you. Oh man, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the fair magic. Well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah, goblins, goblins and this is great. But the, you know what's, what's unfair is flyers. Fly, flyers, flyers, flyers are pretty, pretty unfair. <laughs> He can't do anything about it. He needs a gem helm incinerator. That's what he's looking for. He needs another goblin and a gem helm incinerator. Get kill the Delver. It can't be countered. So I I, I didn't see an activation on one last turn. I didn't either. It's uh Loose it's unfortunate. Player. We're gonna have to we're gonna have to talk to Mr. Ford about that after this because that's, that's the match. It's really course. really unexpected. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. And it's a passing of the turn. Oh wow. That is, this is this is one of the ways that the goblins player can really get uh, punished is if they Ooh. can't keep up with. They can't go with the Ooh. Delver. And we see an activation. Banner? Are we, but are it we might gonna? Be, it might be a fake. We don't actually know if it's... Yep. Yes. We, we are We are waiting for it to result. Okay. It is it's not a fake. Oh, wow. And it's the Scourge. That card is so good right now. Bouncing it. Oh, he's cycling the trigger, though. Yep. Still, as, still as, takes as we talked about, there are quite a few powerful into the battlefield effects for the Goblins player. So being able to stifle one of them here, pretty good use of stifle. Yep. doesn't get a whole lot better than that. Yeah, saving, cause saving your clock there is really important. And then it just dies, exactly. so... Yep. Almost a removal spell. Almost counter spell, to be honest. Yeah, it really was. All right, two mana, and we're gonna see. Uh, that is the uh, double striking one one. Yep, that is Warren Instigator. And we're gonna see an Again, exile. To be a exiling land. a land and casting a brainstorm. brainstorm response. Looking for possibly a force of will since he did cast off the lands. Uh, that would make the most sense to me. Or a days would also suffice. Yep. Since he only yeah. Two lands. Now, now that we've got our Delver flipped, uh, we are fully on the don't let Dan cast his spells plan. Mm -hmm. We're just looking for any kind of interaction we can find. Lightning bolts, assuming we can cast them. Dazes, right. forces. Looks like they did resolve them. It um, did resolve. That's not the most threatening right now, right? There is a no. there is a death rate that can just block it and exactly. they'll just die. They 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 will trade, uh, which I don't think is what Dan is looking for right now. No, not at all. He needs to get in. He yeah, needs he, to, he, he, he really needs to, to start and deploying threats and and playing to the board because he has uh, not had a cu productive couple of turns. No. So, so it looks like in uh, Frankie's hand he has a Delver, um, some sort of red card that I can't quite make out next to the Delver. Oh, what is that? There's a little glare, so it's hard to see. I know one of them is Young Paramount, oh, it is a full art lightning bolt. That, that card right now is very good. Yep. He's got the, that is exactly the mana to, to cast it. Frankie was looking for. Oh, no activation on the, I don't like this. Yep, but he's only, only activating when he's being honest. Yeah. Not not a poker player, our, our man <laughs> for not very good at bluffing. All right, here's the ringleader we knew was going to happen, so we're really looking for jump palm. That is, that is the card. Tuck -tuck is That's not, not what we're looking for. Matron Matron's not line. awful. But we're, our vial's on four, so... Yes, we are offline. We are not uh, not excited. Yeah, this is this is not what he needed at this point in time in the game. If he can cast Matron this turn, it might still be okay, but... This is a slow, 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 slow grind. Yes. And, yeah. oh, I've, I have just not 
paying attention to life totals. Uh, I believe he's attacked now twice since then. Is that correct? I believe so. so I'm at, I think um, he's at 11. Uh, but we'll we'll check on that in a second. Um, and take a take a look see. Here, let so uh, yeah, this is. Just one second, folks. We're looking to possibly get the life totals here. Looks like we've got a block activate, and there is the lightning bolt on the double striking warrant instigator. Uh, I would have been a very different game if that had gotten through. And it looks like life totals, I was just a little bit off. 11 was correct for Dan Ford, and 16 for Frankie from some fetches, I'm assuming. Another Chrome Mox, exiling that Tuck Tuck Scrapper. Makes sense, card's not doing anything yep, right now. Not, not the match for that, so. And we're gonna play it, our red goblin. mana is about as good as it's gonna get, especially with the way that the game's been playing out. Now, do we get greedy and just get another ringleader to try and find another jump I'm, to find the I'm jump home? Always a fan of being greedy, mm. uh, especially in situations like this where it does not look like we're really winning a. Oh. Uh, ooh, wow, that, dude. that is. That's a card. That's a spicy one. That does take up the, we're gonna get to five next turn yep. and then we can activate. The Aether Vial is going to allow us to get a Siege Gang Commander through Counter Magic. And Siege Gang Commander resolving is no small deal. Now and if you have another land, that's gonna be two activations which will kill both the Delvers and that'll really neuter the clock to yep. almost nothing and oh, then yeah. it'll kill the Death Ray the next turn. And if we thought this is a big game. stifling the, uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the Sting Scorcher was a big game. This uh, is we, are, we are absolutely looking for a stifle here. Ooh. There's and a it's a spell pierce, so that's not going to be any good, but it, but it flips the Delver, it does and that the matters Delver. a ton. This is going to be a hit for 6, bringing him down to 5, which is a virtual 3 right now. Absolutely. Uh, we, are, we are very, very, so, uh, very important turn for Dan Ford coming up. He, he needs, he needs need the land. To he hit has the land to hit the land, or um, he will die. He just can't afford to take another three from one of these Delvers. Nope. Yeah, this is Lander Bust, I believe. I don't I don't know any other outs from, to fly. From, from the position of violing in the Siege Gang yes, Commander yes. and killing both Delvers, the Death Rite should put him to three. And then Frankie three. will untap, be able to activate one more time, putting him to one. And but after that, for bolts. he should be able to keep the board clear as Siege Gang Commander will kill everything outside of a true name nemesis from Mr. Rodriguez, but he is live to drawing lightning bolts. No red source, currently, nope. but... All right, this is uh, do or die time. Do we have a land? I, it, it, looked, it looked colorless to me, but if it's another Chromox, that, that would be good enough. That would be good enough. Um. All right, we passed the first test. God, what a magic card. Three, one, one goblins. He's splitting up his lands in such a way that makes me feel like he has another one. We gotta believe. Sack, That's kill the one. Denver. All right, Dan. Oh, it's a wasteland. It's a wasteland. Beautiful. That, All right. that, that's really uh, powerful. Th yeah, that's it could put him potentially on not even being able to cast cards like Ponder and Brainstorm to find copies of Lightning Bolt. Yep, and we're even getting in with our little tutu. I love it. We 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 definitely have a window to close this game out, and we can't waste any time. We do no. not want to give Frankie the chance to draw more cards than he. Needs so light to. lightning bolt off the top will kill. Uh, now he's at three, um, and he he also has he a blue needs mana a red to work with. Well, he he right, but he can't activate the death rate. Oh, uh, Dan's at three right now. So yes, lightning bolt on this turn will end the game. But after that game's just going to pull farther and farther away from Frankie. Yeah. Let me get that live chill updated for everyone at home. So, but he has a blue mana, so if he has a cantrip, he can search for the lightning bolt, dig a little deeper. Um, yeah, let's see what his hand is. It's a, uh, I believe he still has the spell pierce. I think that's a Gurmog Angler, which is not really going to do anything at this point. I don't think it's, it's it's big but there's one ones right yeah yeah the, um, uh, the goblin deck does not go tall it goes wide so uh, you will be able to block but you will probably not be blocking very much of the goblins damage mm -hmm. output by playing the bigger mag angler 
But if he it, does have a cantrip, I think his mana is much better spent casting cantrips. I just I don't see one. I think it's a true name, the spell pierce, the Gurmog, and now, then to be fair, that? five five is very difficult to kill with Siege Gang Commander. Yeah, it is this is gonna buy him a lot of time, right? Yes, uh, it, it is going 14. to make attacking for Dan very awkward because he knows that if he attacks, he has to leave a blocker back for the angler. Um and uh yeah. Just attacking into the angler is going to be very costly because he is going to have to activate twice to finish it off, yep. most likely. So we're gonna well I think he he has to kill the the Del or the actually actually, he's still at three. This shaman, even though it's very strong, he technically could wait and do it on his own turn. I don't like that play. I'm just showing that it's it's a viable option. Uh, but he's going to go ahead and just fire it off and kill it. I was thinking because he could block the uh, the Grimog and then sack to kill the Deathrite, but that's giving me access to more mana. I didn't like that. Just thinking through everything that's going on. Yeah, no, it, it allows him to get a little bit more, more damage through. But yeah, I, I, I think we want to we wanna make sure that he doesn't do anything tricksy to us. Yeah. And yeah, it picks it up almost to attack, but decides that a 5-5 five five is too big. Yep. Uh, with our Aether Rail set on 5, we probably will not be activating that too Kiki often Jiki. anymore. Kiki Jiki's the last Kiki one. Kiki Jiki is still in the deck. And that is, that is, ugh, Kiki Jiki would Kiki pretty much Kiki end of the Jiki game. Kiki Jiki would blow this game yeah. wide Siege open. Siege gangs over and over are really powerful. We're already dead to Lightning Bolt, so we're not playing around that anymore. So yeah, a Kiki Jiki would be a tremendous play. And it looks like we're about to find one. I, I, I had to be, guess. I would be surprised if we found anything else here. Mm-hmm. So, Matron, for that, that sweet, sweet Kiki Jiki. And this is what we were talking about earlier, mm -hmm. as the Goblins deck, there it is. it's a mountain deck, but this it's, is no aggressive deck. It's, it's this blue is in its a heart. value deck. <laughs> the value and it just has pinpoint accuracy, right? You have all these nice one-ofs that you can find uh, when you just some matchups, yeah, grind out value. I, it's it's uh, great. A lot of people, you know, identify cards like Stoneforge Mystic or like Night of the Reliquary as toolbox cards. Mm -hmm. This is a toolbox deck. deck. Yep, there's nothing else this deck's doing. And he's actually it, just going to pass. Has, it has, you know, specific cards for specific matchups and uh, has access to them very, very easily. And we're going to see Pro paying two life. Um, yep, yeah, we're still looking for our Red Source, Red Source Lightning into... Bolt because at this point that is the only thing that is going to save Mr. Rodriguez. And I think he only has about a turn before he just dies. So, because uh, then a turn he can Kiki Jiki. Yeah, ki Kiki Jiki make uh, the is going to be coming into play at the end of the turn. And that's going to keep the Siege Gang around because it's end of turn. So I, it, I, it's yeah. an extra 2 2 plus all the 1 1s. He can activate again, get another 2 2, mm -hmm. all the 1 1s. It's, it's and, a lot. And if we hit another land here, we could be in a position where we are attacking and throwing at oh. at his head. There, no, there's a, there's a Lord in his hand. He just needs to play the there Lord. Everything becomes a two two, okay, and so we that are, is pretty much it. We are it. probably going to finish this game very quickly. Yeah, there. Yeah, that's All right, that is game. Wow, one. that was two that goblins. Was a that was a game. fantastic that was a nice one. back and forth. Um, you know, he he faltered on mana, but just the absolute powerhouse that was Siege Gang Commander yep. really brought it all back. He he hit the land on the important turn. And um, stabilized that uh, three. Was, yeah, di died. You know, to lightning bolts, but knew exactly when and where to to put pressure. Knew exactly when and where to uh, to fight his battles. So that was a, a fantastic game played by Quill Boy both players. Yep, I agree. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the sideboards. What do we have here? So we've got four, and this is in the Goblins deck. We've got four Thorn of Anathos. Um, one Mind Break Trap, two Blood Moons, one Sting Scourger, Sting Scourge, one uh, Tuck Tuck Scrapper, one Pyrokinesis, one Goblin Sharpshooter, three Surgical Extraction, and one Sudden Demise. What do you like? So, I'll be honest, I'm probably bringing in Blood Moon. Really? I, 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 I feel like it's an easy way to just not have to play a game yeah. uh, if the blood moon comes down it's going to turn off every single land in the delver players mana base and then it also um as we were talking about earlier it can very easily become a matchup about who's you know using more mana who's who's keeping up tempo better and blood moon just makes that a absolute one-sided now victory. one one thing that would give him red mana for those lightning bolts though <laughs> oh, <laughs> a, a dangerous plan <laughs> 
Um, no, I, I do agree with that, and especially with the Chrome Moxes, he can power that sucker out on turn absolutely. two. Um, so I also really like the Pyrokinesis. I absolutely love the Pyrokinesis. Mm -hmm. If we had seen Pyrokinesis resolve that game, it would have been disastrous. Oh, for the game the wouldn't have existed player. anymore. It would have just been over. Oh yeah. Next turn. It, it, it would have been. It would have been game over. Uh, it, it, it's at the very least a two for one, often a three for one with how mm -hmm. small the uh, Delver player's creatures are. And, and it's a tempo swing, right? It's, it's, it's an enormous tempo card. swing. Yeah, as we were just talking about, uh, mana usage and playing to the board is so important. And and a free spell that can kill two of your opponent's you know, creatures, not not tokens, but just full of creatures, is yep. a back-breaking spell. So it also creates a, a very nice dynamic because on the whole, I think the Grixis Delver player would like to be removing a majority of their counter spells because they're so bad against Aether Vial and Ch um, Cavern of Souls. Yep. But these powerhouse spells like Blood Moon and Pyrokinesis force them and, to keep it. And, uh, uh, and Aether Vial. And Aether Vial, uh, absolutely. I, I feel like he's going to remove all the dazes really, and keep all the forces. It really forces him to keep some amount of counter magic in because he just can't keep up with the Goblin's opponent if one of these just absolutely insane spells results. Yeah, I'm really expecting all like the spell pierce and stuff to come out, but I'm expecting all force forces to stay in. Yes. Uh, because they just they just have to, right? It's yeah. a concession you must make, yeah. and it's it's very unfortunate for the Grixis Soldier player, but you, you really just need to do it. And that's that's why goblins is so so good at fighting against decks like these, is mm -hmm. uh, cr creating those those powerful dynamics of some of your cards are bad regardless of how you present your sixty. And of course, the Sendomize, I think, comes in as well. Um, yes. Yeah, that, that's one just, just pr that's pretty obvious one. that card's good here. Let's take a look at our Grixis Delver. We have one Izzet Staticaster, three Cabal Therapy, one Flusterstorm, two Pyroblast, two Surgical Extraction, one Ancient Grudge, two Diabolic Edict, one Pithing Needle, one Jitte, and one Bitter Blossom. What do you like? I like Umazawa's Jitte. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, very good against creatures with one toughness. I like Bitter Blossom. Also, traditionally good against creatures with one toughness. And uh, wears Jitte quite well. Probably, probably very well. Uh, is it Staticaster? Also in the same vein, allows him to uh, get a lot of value by killing off tokens, like we saw last game from CJ and Commander, but also just allowing him to kill a lot of the uh, value creatures. Uh, that one instigators, be things of that nature. You're really, yeah, it, you're all, all, all the stuff that's going to be attacking one toughness. Um, outside of that, I'm not super excited. I could s potentially see Edict as it is a removal spell, mm -hmm. but only in the strictest sense of the word. I would not yeah. be bringing it in here. No, I also would not. Unless he has a lot he wants to... Like, I mean, he has a lot of dazes, right, that he wants to get out, spell pierces probably, so there's a chance he brings it in just because he really doesn't want the dazes. Looking at his hand, he has a Pithing Needle. Oh, yep, yep, he does so have one of those on the side. Needle naming Aether Vial seems powerful. Yep. Pithing Needle naming uh, Kiki Jiki. Pithing Needle naming... Siege Gang Commander, all Cranko. very powerful. Yep. A lot of options for that card. And, and it looks like we're going to have a mulligan from the Goblins player. So it didn't like the 7, going to ship it back. Now, I feel like mulliganing with Goblins isn't actually as devastating as most decks. Um, right. Mulligans pretty well. Yes. No, I, 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 I think we, we've talked about the ability of the Goblins player to generate uh, incredible amounts of value through um, their... their uh, Creatures enter the battlefield effects, uh, specifically the um, help me the the one that looks at the top four cards. Uh, Ringleader. Ringleader. Yes, that that card is just probably Massive. one of the best card advantage engines in the format. If we're being oh honest. yeah, I mean there, there's one that's a soldier right that does the same thing, but there's not enough soldier support. I, I, I think <laughs> there is one yeah. for all of the tribes. And there's one for each color because I know there's an elf elves one that yep. they don't play too much of. But and they have ones of natures. <laughs> yeah, Glimpse Nature's, Glimpse Nature's, Glimpse Nature's, Glimpse Nature's a one. little bit better as a card advantage engine, but <laughs> different deck. And it looks like our hand is Land Land, Chromox, Chromox, Ringleader, Tarfire. This is not what I want to see when I'm a Goblins player. I want, I, I mean, the Ringleader's great, but everything else is so anemic. Um, we're, we're, we're trusting a lot in the top of our deck <laughs> with this hand. Yep. Uh, and that Ringleader has to resolve, right? Like, if that doesn't resolve, this game is over. Absolutely. We, 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 we have a hand that has uh, the potential to beat some very mana tight hands mm -hmm. we can kill a death right shaman with our tar fire and then tap down with our uh with our port but uh yeah if the uh delver player is going to be you know firing on all cylinders as as we say we are going to have to have some pretty powerful draws because 
her hands a little slow, yep. at, uh, to say the least. And we do see the first grow mox. Now, we only know two. We, we, he did draw, so he might have found something else to exile, but Tarfire and Ringleader, there's no way he's exiling the Ringleader. So yeah, I, I would be Does shocked. he have to exile with Tarfire, or did he find something else to exile and still use the Tarfire? Krenko. Krenko. That's a fine one. Yep. You don't really need that right now. You don't really yep, need not, it at all. Not, it's not the time for that currently. And I'm expecting Tarfire to just take care of this. Buys him a lot of time. Yep. And yep. that's all he wants. And I, I think that's where the Goblins player wants to be in this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, just make sure he doesn't die. Get to cast his uh, powerful cards like Matron, like Ringleader, and, and just accrue enough advantage to push out the Delver player yep. through, ca through, through card advantage without really having to rely on, um, you know, I, like bad attack steps or anything like that. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, Goblins is the control in this ma is the control player in this matchup. Yes, the, the mono red control deck. Legacy. Legacy is a <laughs> format. So we're going to see the same hand, uh, yep. land mox all, and ringleader. Paying all too light. already known, mostly just casting the attack scene probe for digging. Draw a card. Does he have a second land? Um, or is he going to always pawn, as, right? as we were saying, yeah, th this is one of the hands that could could punish by this uh, by this port. It, uh, yeah, there's a port, and also, like, if he wants to, he can just try and jam the ringleader next to if he draws a red card, right? He has a Absolutely. mox, he could just go for Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And we're seeing a shuffle, so I'm I'm thinking he's looking for land. I, I, if I'm the goblins player, that is what I'm suspecting. And so, yeah, um, we could certainly, uh, cast our ringleader into this, but if, if, if he did shuffle and doesn't play a land here, I'm probably just gonna port. Yeah, especially if he draws uh, like a lackey effect. Right? Oh my gosh, that would, that be, would be, be a fantastic turn. All right, let's see what we've got. We've got we port. port. And tell me, oh my gosh, did he draw the lackey? Oh, it's Ooh. Ooh, that one's. You know what? This game is slow enough where he could honestly just wait until he gets to four. Oh yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't judge him at all for that. I would actually really like that play. No, yeah. Like no, no reason to play into it if we don't have to. Interesting. So he, he dazes it, bouncing his land, uh, yep. and the port taps. So it really, it, the, it's essentially just doing the same thing that the port would do. Uh, no major change there unless he would have top decked a land. Um, well, it, but even he's then allowing the him to have the blue source in his main phase. Yeah. So he can cast Ponder effects. Or Delver. Or Delver. Um, versus only having the mana in his upkeep. So yeah, as you said, there's a Ponder. Um, however, if he's dazing just to get an additional <laughs> mana. Yeah, that's not where you want to be. That's not a great spot for the Delver player. Um, also, by dazing there, it allows him to kind of um, like uh, hide if he draws a land here because he's going to be playing the same land as yeah. his draw step anyway. That's so, true. if he does draw a land here, he's not going to be playing it, which could push the Goblin player into porting again, even if it's not necessarily what the game is about. Um, there's another land in play. Uh, how that did that happen? That should not happen. That shouldn't be occurring. Let's, uh, we're going to try and get that fixed right now. Hey, uh, guys. Uh, feature match area. You dazed? You, you play, play two lands in one turn. Oh, okay. One nice thing about sitting near the feature match area, um, we can just kind of yell towards them when yeah. things like that happen. So. Well, that's, uh, that's one of the benefits of... Mm -hmm. Being uh being in the same room with our our competitors, now to uh, have the quick fix. Now that does also show though goblins that he has the other land. I'm sure he's still going to port here. Yeah, but no, I mean free free information is free. free information. No, yeah. Can't be can't be upset about that. But yes, uh, I don't know if that's going to change the play pattern here too much, because I do believe he is still choked on mana. Mm -hmm. So he's revealing the. Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite and the... Th those yeah. are the two cards that he, he displayed. So he is actually just going to go for it because he knows he's going to get unlocked on mana next turn and he doesn't think he has enough time, I think, to get the to buy out of four. And I, I think this is a fantastic play. Yeah, I agree. So, oh, wow. What there's, a... There's some cards. What a flip. Now, some people might be thinking, that's not a goblin. That's Tarfire. But... If you look carefully at the art, it is there a is a goblin. <laughs> and if yeah. you look carefully at the text box... Tribal. It is a tribal instant mm -hmm. goblin. Uh, <coughs> so, the uh, typical removal spells for a goblin player are Tarfire, because it interacts favorably with all of its uh, goblin cards, and yep. just one of the most ridiculous cards in the deck, uh, Gem Palm Incinerator, Ooh. 
uh, which is a goblin that has the ability to cycle to deal damage equal to the number of goblins you have in play. In play. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, if you like Doomblade, Doomblade that draws a card, even better. Yeah, and I, I also think a big reason to run the Goblin Tower Fire over like a Lightning Bolt. Flavor. Right. Oh, I mean. You, you got it. That goes without goblin saying. Goblin Tribal. I mean, I, it's it's a goblin. And so we're gonna see a wasteland on that port, um, coming from the Grixis Stealth Blade. Now that's a pretty aggressive line, um, being on, stuck on one land and then just going ahead. And yeah, he he, he, he must feel that he's not under too much pressure to to be able to spend his turn um, casting or ca casting the wasteland this mm -hmm. turn. Um, because yeah, it, it does uh, free up some of the opponent's mana, really. Yeah. Uh, in, in a strange way, because they don't have to dedicate mana to the port. Ooh, and there's a lackey, and we know he has a tar fire in hand to clear the way, so he needs a, an actual removal spell for that. And, and he, he does. He bolt. has met the. Uh, he's passed the test. <laughs> Very important, because that would have been just game over. Oh yeah. Um, no. If uh, ha having a, a lackey uh, trigger is one of the fastest ways to lose a game against goblins. It really doesn't matter what they're putting into play. Just that much mana advantage is going to be disastrous. So what do you think the chance is? He just goes Matron next turn off the vial, gets another ringleader, and then ringleaders the next turn off the vial. I think that's... Uh, I mean, especially with the way that Frankie is... Ooh. Oh, dear. Well, so much for that boy. Yeah. <laughs> Guess we're just going to do it the old-fashioned way and use our lands. But yeah, I, I think that would have been a fantastic play, considering the way that Frankie has been playing this game. Spending his turn you know, attacking the goblins' mana base um, really does uh, incentivize trying to get the most value versus the most tempo. Mm -hmm. uh, you really want to try and get as many cards as possible versus trying to use your mana if he's going to be, you know, untapping with an untapped volcanic island, we're, we're probably okay. I, he, he used the, uh, the lightning bolt last turn, so I guess he, yeah. did, he, he did use all of his mana. So yeah, Frank, Frank, he's, Frank he's doing fine. Yeah, I mean, that, that Pithy Neal is r really going to hurt Dan Ford. Um, he just essentially lost three lands next turn. Yes. It's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and now we have a giant zombie fish uh, able to easily block any goblin that decides to come its way. So. Yeah, the, uh, the board is, is quite turn. different than when Dan Ford passed the turn uh, mm -hmm. last turn. Uh, the Aether Vial is no more. He does not have <gasps> a lackey. And Did you see that? It's a Blood Moon. It's a what? It's a Blood Moon. Oh my goodness. Well, blood Moon was drawn. Um, and Exciting. Board, we found a Blood Moon. But also, that means I was right. <laughs> <laughs> True. I mean, did anyone really question that? No. no. Okay, so... Th He's going to play on the days. Uh, if, if Frankie had mana problems before, Frankie won't have some real mana oh, problems yeah. now. This game is going to get interesting. And, and yeah. This uh, is zombie fish, and we, that's all we we've really got. We really do have all the time in the world at this point. So I, I like to play around the days, even though it's unlikely he has it. I, I, I really like it. it. It's yes. just uh, no reason not to, right? The Tarfire it, it, isn't doing it, it, anything against It's a situation this fish. where the days is unlikely, but if the Blood Moon resolves, it doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. Like, like what, once the Blood Moon resolves, like, yeah, you know, like, oh, I had to get rid of the Lackey. It's like, none, none of this matters. Oh, it was the Tarfire, actually, that he got rid of. Oh, was, oh yeah, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the Lackey is in the graveyard. Yeah, the, yeah not, not having the Tarfire is not going to matter a whole now, lot. This giant fish, though. Um, we is, do is have it? to do something about mm -hmm. this in the next three turns. But what is the matron that we, we know about? We are oh. not, uh, oh. not scared of me. I mean, he, he, a... he's doing okay considering his uh, his mana. Yeah, that's that's a red card he just cast. Um, so and I do believe he has a lightning bolt in he hand. He does. Very good right now. Uh, he, he might just be able to tempo out the goblins deck right now. That, that would be... I mean, so, if... if Blood Moon comes down, mm -hmm. and the opponent is still casting spells, the, the Blood Moon card is purely a tempo card. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have, it doesn't draw you a card, it doesn't have power toughness, it is not playing to the board. The only thing it does is it costs the opponent mana. Yep. So if the opponent is still using their mana after you play a Blood Moon, it's not happy place. it is not doing what you wanted it to do. Now, we did see that he searched up that tar fire to kill the t uh, the young pyromancer, giving him a lot more time, uh, and I like that play. I really like just true. getting the immediate I answer and taking care of that. Yeah, I, I think that's a fantastic play, but that does mean that we are, you know, one turn farther from killing this fish. It's true, it's true. Uh, we do see Chump block on the fish, and... Uh, does he have, oh, does he have another, he has another We are just 
ripping that. Hot fire. I think he had that in his hand, actually. I think I saw him draw the land. Oh, okay. I could be wrong. Well, I mean, if I so, and that would make the, make the last play make even more yeah. sense. It does. Yeah. There's no, no way. <laughs> nothing to worry about if uh, if that's the case. Now I'm expecting Kiki. Oh, oh, Ooh. oh, oh. That, yeah, that's that, that is a combo. Mm. He could, oh, he just gets to cast Mount, and everything. Yeah, mount, mountains plus bounce spells combo. And this is this is looking really good for Dan Ford. Yeah, Some I, tight I would play, be really good knowledge of his deck. Very he didn't, he didn't surprised hesitate. to see uh, the Delver player find a way out of this. Mm -hmm. um, the Blood Moon in play. Does Disasters. he have an answer in his deck? Uh, that's and red. also behind on board, he he has to. He's just got so much work to do to to find a way out. So he has an ancient part. grudge in his sideboard, uh, and he could have brought it in for the pity needle. So there's a chance that he just ancient grudges this blood moon, and then recasts the fish. I don't believe ancient oh. grudge can destroy enchantments. Oh, I'm I don't yes, I'm you know. But if it did, that would be, be that would be very exciting. I was thinking I've been. Toying with my modern sideboard in natural states and ancient grudges, and uh, now I'm just getting them mixed up on what well, destroys now, what. Now, now you know. Yeah. If you're afraid of blood, it's extremely ancient important. grudge, no not go. Gonna, not going to take care no, of it. No go. It just it seems like such an artifact. It doesn't do anything. It does feel like an artifact. In some ways. I think, I like think if they could right? have made it a red artifact, they probably would have made it a red artifact. True. Anyway, here we go. We're getting in for he plays. The yeah, there's not a whole lot left of uh, to go on in this game. I I think we've got maybe. Maybe one more draw step, but it's really kind of just a uh, fire your face, okay. and that's just going to be the hand. Well, that was uh, a very powerful display by the Goblins player. Um, yeah, he really played tight both games. Uh, the, I mean, ga ga game one was really a uh, a, a close one, but mm -hmm. yeah, he 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 managed the board well. He managed uh, all of his tutors fantastically, and and game two was just showing the the power of of his sideboard cards. And let's I'm not sure if the other match is already completed. I um, do believe it is. It but is done. I will right. go double check. Um Nick will take care of that. I'll go Frankie and Rodriguez, everything. the Rixus Delver player that we watched this round was actually my ride. So I will be leaving. <laughs> um you know un unfortunate to see my, my good friend uh lose his match, but we got to watch Goblins do Goblins things, so there's always an upside. Um, I will be handing the coverage over to one of our Somebody. fine uh, Arizona Magic players. Hmm. Uh, hashtag but Arizona Magic players. DM. Thank you for joining um, me. But yeah, it was a pleasure I, having I, you in the, uh, to those last two will rounds. will definitely be returning to the Arizona Eternal Magic City Championships at Play or Draw on, on April, April 15th. 15th. Uh, we will be streaming it. You will see me on camera. That's a promise. And, a bold uh, promise. Yeah. Bold. You're a bold, bold guy. I am a bold guy. And thank you. Uh, so, yeah. This is Nick Gill, Storm Player Aficionado, signing off. Thanks, Nick. So, uh, so we're going to go ahead and find out uh, if the next round is going to start. And... Uh, I'm going to take a quick break, about five minutes, while we find someone else to join me in the booth. And may, who knows, maybe it's just me in the last round with you guys. Um, but I'll try and find someone to join us. Uh, otherwise, we'll be back in probably, I'm going to guess, five minutes. Um, so stick around.